Good evening everyone. We are here at Aussies. I'm Nasdeep, a PT trainer. And today in the live session, we'll be talking about two very scoring modules of the PT exam. First being retail lecture and the second summarized spoken text. So our live session today is going to be concerning the techniques that you should follow in retail lecture and in summarized spoken text in order to score better. These two questions are very, very crucial for the exam. In retail lecture, you know that you get your marks in speaking and listening. So there are some strategies that you should follow to increase your listening score. Same is true for summarized spoken text. If you write a very good paragraph but your content quality is very low, you will not score in listening. So our emphasis today is going to be listening and how to increase our score in listening for both these question types. So you know that they are fundamentally very similar. An audio plays. In retail lecture, you are supposed to repeat it back. So you're supposed to be speaking, retelling the lecture. While in summarized spoken text, you are supposed to be typing back the summary. So they're fundamentally very similar. However, they are also very different in their marking scheme and what determines your score in each one of them. So I want you to give it a guess till everybody comes in and join us for this live session. So in the comment box below, I want you to answer, try and answer. What do you think is different about retail lecture and summarized spoken text? And also, if you have any doubts in any of these particular questions, I encourage you to please post it in the comments because the more you post, the more we will be able to address in this video. So I'm waiting for your comments. All right, so let's begin. Let's start talking about retail lecture. So let's have a look on the blackboard up here. So in retail lecture and in summarized spoken text, which gives you marks in speaking. Am I visible in the camera? <laughs> Hi. So in retail lecture and in summarized spoken text, you get marks for your content. So that means which determines whether or not you get your marks in listening. So presumably if retail lecture is playing and the lecture is about global warming and I tend to say some very generic lines and I do not include content from the lecture, I will not get marks in content. And if I don't get marks in content, I will not score in listening. Same is true for summarized spoke, spoken text. So more your content, more your marks in retail lecture. More the content, more your marks in summarized spoken text. So what is the real difference between retail lecture and in summarized spoken text? So just talking about retail lecture up here. Retail lecture is checked with transcript. Now what's transcript? Have you heard of the term lyrics? What are song lyrics? Everything said in the song in a written version. So lyrics are basically a written version of everything that is said in the song. Same, transcript is the written version of everything that is said in the lecture, everything said in the audio. So your retail lecture is checked with the transcript. That means they have a written version of everything that was said in the audio and they check your retail lecture with that transcript. How does it benefit us? It benefits us in a manner that the quality of keywords that we pick in retail lecture doesn't matter. No matter where we are selecting our words from, starting of the lecture, middle of the lecture, whether we are picking sim simple stuff or whether we are picking difficult stuff, whether we are saying a lot of stuff related to the main topic or not, it doesn't actually matter in retail lecture. So in retail lecture, you can write anything to everything to increase your content score. Most students in retail lecture, they really try to write down those tough words, which are very hard to speak later and they usually lose marks in fluency while trying to read those words. Also while jotting down those words, they feel difficulty to spell them out and to note them down and a lot of the lecture is wasted trying to write that word and they are not able to get enough content. So one tip I would love to give you for retail lecture is that don't emphasize too much on what you are writing. You can pick up anything to everything from anywhere in the lecture, 
because it is checked with the transcript. Giving you an example of that and also trying to illustrate a point that when I say pick up anything to everything, I do not mean that you can pick up haphazard words. For instance, if I say global warming is a big environmental issue and it has been happening all around the world. If out of these two sentences, the keywords you have picked up big issue around, these won't get you marks. They're just random words. You could take an English vocabulary with score that way. So you are not supposed to pick random words like these. You are supposed to pick keywords. But the quality of the keywords doesn't matter. So if you pick big issue, it's okay. If you miss the word environmental, it's fine. It's a big environmental issue, you just pick up big issue, it's okay. It is happening all around the world. You write around the world, it is okay. So you're supposed to pick any two word phrases that came up anywhere in the lecture, regardless of whether they are big words or not so big words. You are not supposed to emphasize too much over the quality. So if they continue saying the lecture, global warming is a big environmental issue, it is happening all around the world, many people are involved in it, you write people are involved, then they go on to say that there is a big company called Infosys which has been trying to deal with it. Now, I don't really know how to say Infosys, more or less I don't even know how to spell it. If there are such fancy big terms, there are names of people or there are names of these companies which you do not understand in the first go. I highly encourage you to not write it because instead of writing that fancy name of the company, you can just say a company is trying to solve the problem. That will be much better. So emphasizing what I'm trying to say again, in retail lecture, the quality of your keywords do not matter. You can pick up anything and anything from the lecture. So any two words, phrases that you understand that make sense to you, you should jot them down. More the content, more the marks. Also, we need to realize that we only get 40 seconds to speak our retail lecture. So if I have 30 points up there, I wouldn't be able to say all 30. So if you are really good at note taking in retail lecture, improve the quality, don't improve the quantity too much. Because you only have 10 seconds to prepare your retail lecture. If you go on and you just keep on writing, in 10 seconds you cannot really decipher which keywords you are going to include and which ones you are not going to include in your retail lecture. So in retail lecture, you have to be very careful with your note taking and very thoughtful about what you are writing because if you just write anything to everything and you try to write too much and you have 45 words there in the 10 seconds of prep you will not be able to exclude good ones from the bad ones and then you'll have to start speaking and once you start speaking you are still in your sheets trying to decide which words you should be talking about and which you will not be talk talking about and you think the moment you the marks influence you will go down terribly so saying it once again, the moment you start thinking about which keywords to include and which not to include, you will think, the moment you think, you will take a pause and if you take a pause, your marks and fluency go away. So in retail lecture, there are three things to remember. I can write anything to everything. I'm going to try to write not more than 16 keywords and I'm going to be fluent. I'm not going to think and talk. Also, some students in retail lecture, when they have those keywords done, they really try to make sentences out of them. Most people think that if they will say really good sentences and if they really explain the lecture well, it will give them more marks. We need to realize that the computer does not understand the meaning. So if you go on in details too much, actually trying to give computer a retail lecture, good time possibility is that you will be taking pauses and you will not get a good score. So versus that somebody who gave a really good lecture versus someone who just said keywords which didn't even mean a very meaningful sentence when combined all together. This person will get more marks. For instance, if just the same lecture is about global warming and one person is like, the lecture was about global warming um, and in the lecture they said that it, it, it was a very big environmental concern and many cities are trying to address it. So this is the first person actually saying the real thing but taking pauses. Versus someone who's like, the lecture was about global warming, it was said big issues, cities and towns and also a company. The second person will get more marks. So it was said big companies, issues and big company. Makes no sense really. I repeated my keyword but what I'm trying to say is the sentence the second person formed really may, has no meaning. But it is said in fluency, it has keywords from the lecture. So the person, the second person will score a better score. So in retail lecture, 
do not try to make real sentences. You just have 40 seconds to talk. You really try to make sentences, you cannot include a lot of content and we have to include a lot of content. And also we have to be fluent. So don't try to make your sentences. So summarizing everything I've just said about reader lecture, it is checked with a transcript. So pick up anything from anywhere in the lecture. This is especially beneficial for a very short lecture or a le lecture in a bad accent which we cannot 100% understand. Second thing, don't try to make sentences and be fluent. And third thing, please don't emphasize on the meaning too much. Realize you are doing it for a computer. So combine your keywords together and say it in fluency. All right, I am waiting for questions about reader lecture and then we'll get into details about your summarized spoken text. So we are still waiting for some questions that you have about reader lecture. Please post them so that we can answer them and then we can proceed to summarize spoken text. About the template for reader lecture. Yes, you can use a template for reader lecture, but I'm saying it again. If your template has a lot of generic words and less content from the lecture, you won't score as much as in the lecture. So I guess generally wherever you train, they will always give you a template. We at Aussies, we have a very simple template where we introduce the lecture and then we have dot points. So we say firstly, secondly, thirdly at the end, or we say furthermore, moreover, in addition at the end so that the computer knows that we have done the retail lecture better. So we introduce the lecture and then we make the computer think that we are explaining the lecture and at the end we are concluding the lecture. Regardless of the fact that we give a conclusion or not, we always try to fit it in the same structure so that the computer knows that we have done it correctly. So you can use a template for retail lecture given the fact that it allows you to include content from the audio into it. More content than generic words. Second question that we got. Do we have any more questions for reader lecture? Anything about the keywords, anything about the time management? about your note taking. Alright, let's emphasize on summarized spoken text now. So in retail lecture, we said the quality of the keywords doesn't matter because it is checked with a transcript. Summary, on the other hand, is not checked with a transcript. So everything that is said in the audio, they don't have a red written version of it. So they do not check your summary with a transcript. For a summary, they have a keyword bank. So when an audio plays, they have a keyword bank for that specific audio and your answer is evaluated against those keywords. Most people ask me, if I have 11 keywords versus somebody who has 9 keywords, who will get more marks? The answer is not very simple because assume a person who has 9 keywords, he's got very good 9 keywords versus someone who has got 11 keywords but they are not as good. They are very simple or laid back or 
not good quality keywords. The person with 9 keywords will get more marks than the person with 11 keywords which are not as good. So the quality of your keywords really matters in summarized spoken text. Let's take an example. For example, if in the summary they talk, start talking about a writer and then they give you dot points about the writer. So let's take that they start talking about Mark Twain. They say he was born in Britain. He wrote many fiction novels. His first novel was The Secret Life of Bees. For instance, I'm making it up. So if somebody has keywords like Mark Twain, writer, Britain, The Secret Life of Bees, those are very strong and good keywords. Versus someone who has keywords like writer, all life, big, books, they're not very strong keywords. So you will not score a very good score in listening if your quality of the keywords is bad. So the second person who has these very simple keywords, they would have been okay for a retail lecture. They wouldn't deduct a great deal of marks in retail lecture, but they make a huge difference in listening summaries because your listening summaries are not checked with a transcript and they are checked with a keyword bank. So the quality of your content really matters. Now in listening summaries, we get approximately eight minutes to write them because roughly the question audio is one minute or one and a half minutes. So we have eight to eight and a half minutes to compile in our answer. So while taking notes for your listening summaries, do not think too much about whether what you are writing is of good quality or not. Try to write as much as possible because after the audio finishes, you'll have 10 minutes to exclude. So you have 10 minutes to take a look at your notes and decipher the keywords which will be in your answer and which will not be in your answer. Also, it is true that in summarized spoken text as well, if you have a lot of keywords, that is you have more content, you will get more marks. But the quality of the content really matters. Now let's take another example and you give it a try. If I say the lecture is about tourism in Australia, there are many market motivations leading this trend. A lot of people from across the country have participated to say which tourist sites are better. I'll say the same three sentences again. I want you guys to tell me the main topic of this and any good keyword that you have found in these three sentences. So saying it again, the lecture is about tourism in Australia. There are many market motivations leading this trend. People from all over the country are trying to inform the tourist places which are the most popular. Give it a go. Tell me a good keyword. Don't be afraid, type the keywords in the comment box. Saying it one more time, the lecture is about tourism in Australia. There are many market motivations in forming this trend. There are many people around the country that are... So somebody has commented tourism, country, popular, Australia. They're good keywords. I wouldn't say that they are poor, but they are not even excellent. So what would have been some even better keywords out of this? So tourism in Australia, if we combine that together, that is one strong keyword. We can write marketing trends. Popular, definitely. But popular what? Tourist destinations. And that is what we are supposed to decipher in our summarized spoken text. We always go for these simple words. But these random one one haphazard word is not going to give us marks. Not in retail lecture and not even in summarized spoken text. If you pick one random word from here and there in the lecture, we generally do not score as much. So our keywords are going to be at least two word phrases, maximum four to five word phrases, depending on how improved our note taking is, but at least two word phrases in order to score better. The tourism in Australia popular tourist destinations or maybe just tourist de destinations or just marketing trends they are better and stronger keywords because in keywords you are 
specifically trying to at least pick a two word phrase for it to look more related to the lecture. Exactly, somebody has said market motivations, Australian to tourism, they are better and stronger keywords because your keywords have to be at least your two word phrases. So summarizing it about your summarized spoken text, the quality of the content matters and your answer is checked with a keyword bank. So if they have a keyword bank of the same three sentences I was saying, it will be tourism in Australia, market motivations, people are suggesting, um, tourist places, popular tourist places. And if at the end you have words like tourists, places, they match up, but they don't match up very closely with the keyword bank. And you will see that if your note taking is very, very simple and it is these ha ha hazard words, your marks and vocabulary would be going away. Although you'll be getting your score in grammar and everything else, but your vocabulary score won't be as strong. And this is one of the primary reasons. In the retail lecture and your listening summaries, contribute to a lot of your score that you get in vocabulary. So if you pick up two word phrases or good strong keywords, your score and vocabulary will massively improve. Maybe let's give it a shot with one more audio and let's just pick up one strong keyword from it. Just one. So presumably let's say, local government functioning is a primary area of concern here in Victoria. Local government has three main causes of concern. The primary cause of concern is concerning its citizens where they are trying to make them take more responsibility. So let me say this lecture again. Local government is a primary area of concern here in Victoria. Local government has three main areas to address. The primary area is to make them take more responsibility. So just write one good keyword that you have found from it. At least a two word phrase. Waiting for some answers. Still waiting. Local government, three areas, primary concerns, citizens, more responsibility. Definitely, these are very strong and good keywords to pick up. Local government, three main areas of concern were the most vital. So the keyword bank will definitely have these keywords. So if you are note taking for summarized spoken text, comprises of these strong keywords, and those keywords are at least the two word phrases, your score will massively improve. So definitely give that a go. So let's summarize what we have picked up from today. Transcript determines your score. So the quality of the content doesn't matter. You can pick up any keywords, simple ones, difficult ones, anything is fine. However, in summarized spoken text, it is not checked with transcript. It is checked with keywords. So the quality of the keywords rarely determines your score. So in retail lecture, write anything. In summarized spoke, spoken text, be very sure of what you are writing. Better the quality, more the marks. In here, we only have 10 seconds of preparation time and then we have to talk for 40 seconds. So we don't try to write too much. We are very thoughtful of the number of notes we have taken. In summarized spoken text, however, you don't have to worry about how much you are writing. The more you write, the better. Because at the end, you'll have 10 minutes to decide on your notes of what you're going to include and not include in your answer. All right then, this was all for today. If you have any other questions about summarized spoken text and reader lecture, you can post them in the comment box down this video and we'll be happy to address them. Have a good evening.